so today I'll just give you kind of an idea of what we're going to be covering. So we're going to start with a framework of how to create a healthy meal. So that's going to involve our, um, if you guys could get that up on, we're going to have a healthy plate. If you see in your handout, we have the Fast Year Healthy Plate. And so that's going to provide that framework of what should be in every healthy meal that we're creating. And so just a peek, it's going to be protein, carbohydrate, uh, healthy fat, and vegetables. And so now we're going to transition. We're going to talk about some thrifty shopping tips, uh, specifically bulk bin shopping. And then we're going to have just some general tips on creating a balanced meal, no matter you know, what the situation or the time constraints. And uh, then we're going to go into three specific recipes that will help you complete that healthy plate of yours quickly. And so those three recipes are green and quinoa salad, quick lentil soup, and a chickpea barley crock pot stew. And so at the very end, we'll have time that you guys can come up and sample that. Um, but before we do some samples, once we finish with our presentation, we're going to open up the floor to you guys. And again, another opportunity to share some of your healthy meals that are quick that you make at home any questions that you might have throughout the presentation. If you keep those up here, you can ask those at the very end, and uh, then, of course, we'll get to the good part. We'll, we'll actually eat some food. <laughs> All right, so let's see. So up here, we have our last year healthy plate, and you can see there are some things going on around that plate. But today, we really want to focus in on that plate specifically. So what we're going to talk about is for every meal, we want to have about a fourth of our plate be protein. Another fourth of our plate be a complex carbohydrate or whole grain and starch. And then we want half of our plate to be vegetables. And you can see in the little center there, that little circle, that's a healthy fat. All right, so let's talk about protein first because protein is the foundation of good health. We need protein. It's essential because it's the building block of so many things um, going on in our body. It's the building block of our tissue, our organs, our muscles, and it's also vital for every single process that goes on, on in our body. So we need protein to have metabolism, we need it for digestion, we even need protein so that we can transport other nutrients from other foods around our bodies. We even need it to transport oxygen. So it's, that's why we start with protein, because it's so important to have that with every meal when at all possible. And so when we're going through our day, we're constantly warding off things that are trying to make us sick, and we're breaking down tissue, and it's protein that protects us against those things that make us sick by providing us with immune function, and it also rebuilds that tissue that we break down. And so protein is actually made up of these small little compounds called amino acids. And so there are 22 of these amino acids. And most of these amino acids we actually make ourselves in our own bodies. But there are some amino acids that we can only get through our diet. And so we call those essential amino acids because it's essential that we have them in our foods. And so animal protein actually um, it has all of those essential amino acids. Vegetarian protein, like soy and beans, um, on the other hand, they um, do not have all of the essential amino acids. So when we're thinking about putting the protein together and we want to make sure we have all of these essential amino acids, one way we can do this, just one way, is to always have a whole grain because those whole grains actually have those amino acids that we're missing. So protein and whole grains are great natural partners. Okay, and so let's move on to whole grains. And so whole grains are complex carbohydrates. So just a little background, a reminder of what a carbohydrate is. Um, it's a food that's broken down into little units of glucose, which is sugar. And so our body loves carbohydrates. It's our primary way that we get energy. And so carbohydrates have kind of gotten a bad reputation. A lot of people say that they cause us to gain weight. And the important thing to remember is that not all carbohydrates are created equally. We have complex carbohydrates, and then we have refined carbohydrates. So let's define those terms. So complex carbohydrates are, um, are whole foods. They're things like whole fruits and vegetables and whole grains. And so basically, these uh, complex carbohydrates have had no processing or refining, and they are a fantastic source of fiber. And fiber keeps us full because it's digested slowly in the body, and so it can actually has been found in some studies to help with weight loss because of that fiber slowly digesting. And another thing, because it digests so slowly that the carbohydrate sugar molecules are slowly released into the bloodstream, so we prevent getting those crazy um, sugar rushes, those spikes in our blood sugar. 
And so let's talk on the other hand about refined carbohydrates. So those are the things that are processed and specifically what's happened is part of the grain has been removed and a lot of manufacturers like to add more sugar so it tastes really great. But so those things are like white bread, um, cookies and cake, those are refined carbohydrates and they have little to no fiber. So once you eat that, it's immediately digested and all that sugar goes right into your bloodstream and you get that sugar rush, but that's always followed by a sugar flash. And so we're left feeling even more tired than when we had the food. So, um, so we really want to focus on these whole grains because they're complex carbohydrates and they're a fantastic source of fiber. So I just want to share with you something that I found really incredible is that so people um, who have three or more servings of whole grains a day have a 20 to 30 percent reduction in their risk of heart disease compared to people who have lower amounts of whole grain. And so in addition, this fiber and these whole, the vitamins and minerals that are in these whole grains are reducing our bad cholesterol, our LDL cholesterol. They're also reducing our triglycerides and our blood pressure. So it's doing a lot of great things for us. So that's why we want a fourth of our plate to be complex carbohydrate. In this case, we're going to talk specifically in our recipes about whole grains. All right, and so now we're going to move on to the big part of our plate, which is vegetables. And so we've probably heard that phrase so many times, eat more vegetables. We've probably heard it so many times, we forget why we're supposed to have five servings in the first place. And so the reason that vegetables are so important is because they provide amazing protection against a wide array of chronic diseases. And that's because vegetables are the world's best natural source of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. And so antioxidants are things that protect us against toxins that confront our body every day. And so um, it's believed that these toxic um, compounds that are hitting us every day um, damage our cells, and that's what causes so many of these chronic diseases. Hey guys. Yeah, no problem. Come on right on in. And so some of these chronic diseases that are believed to be a result of this toxic um, assault on us are um, heart disease, cancer, Parkinson's, erythrosclerosis, Alzheimer's, and even diabetes, and the list just goes on. And so vegetables are what provide us with the vitamins, the minerals, and the antioxidants that, that fight these, to um, these toxic compounds. And so they protect us against these chronic diseases. And so, and I also want to mention that just like our whole grains, vegetables are a fantastic source of fiber. So we're getting all of those benefits that we talked about from the fiber, the reduction in heart disease and, and blood pressure, all of that we're getting from vegetables as well. So a lot of us are probably thinking, myself included, that we are sometimes a long ways away from getting those five servings a day. That can be a real challenge. So I just want to leave you with um, this tidbit um, that even adding just one more serving a day from what you're doing now has been found to have really beneficial effects on your health. So adding one more serving can reduce your risk of cancer by 6%. And then also adding one more serving reduces your risk of heart disease by 11%. And that's just one more serving than what we're doing today. All right, and so I also want to point out that we've included the international or sorry, uh, the Institute of Functional Medicine, we have a handout there that actually divides up some fruits and vegetables by color, which can kind of be a fun way of, of thinking about fruits and vegetables because each color really represents oh, some you. specific things that they're doing in your body. So it can be really motivational to see, you know, this, this red um, vegetable has all of these things going on with it, so when I'm eating it, these are all the benefits. So yeah, take a look and at that handout when you get a chance. Thank you. And so finally, the last component of our healthy plate, we've talked about protein, carbohydrates, vegetables. The last component is a healthy fat. Fat can be a really confusing topic. And part of the reason why it's so confusing is because there's so many different kinds of fats. So let's break it down. Um, so fat is important. We need a little bit of fat in our diet because it surrounds and protects our organs. It provides us with some energy. And it's also essential so that we absorb some vitamins. We need fat in order to absorb vitamins A, K, D, and E. So let's talk about the fats that we want to limit. We want to make sure that we're limiting saturated fat and trans fat. So saturated fat are things that we find in animal products like meat and dairy. We want to try and get below 20 grams a day. Trans fat, on the other hand, you want to avoid all the time never want to have trans fat, if at all possible. And so, oh yeah. Why is that? 
I'll get right to it. Oh, You're reading okay. my mind. I <laughs> so, was wondering, what, yeah. what, what is it? Yeah, so, yeah, trans fat um, has no helpful purpose in the body at all. They're finding that saturated fat actually does some beneficial things for us in modest amount. Trans fat, none of that. None of that's going on. Instead, what it's doing, just one of the things is it's, um, it's uh, increasing our bad cholesterol and it's getting rid of our good cholesterol. So that really ups our risk for coronary heart disease and other sort of um, cardiovascular risks. And like I said, it's not doing anything helpful. So it's just best to avoid it. Um, and the, the reason that trans fat is, is not helpful in the body is because our body has no idea what trans fat is. Um, it's, it's found in very small amounts naturally, but for the most part, trans fat is a result of food manufacturing. So it's kind of added into our processed foods. So if you're wanting to avoid trans fat, a really easy way to do that is just to avoid processed foods. And so let's talk about the good fats. <laughs> Let's talk about those things that are actually doing good in our body. And so for the most part, the healthy fats are unsaturated fats. And um, they, the unsaturated fats actually help out with our bad, they get rid of our bad cholesterol, opposite of trans fats. They're actually getting rid of that LDL cholesterol. And so some examples of unsaturated fats are oils, like olive oil, peanut oil, sesame oil. And so these oils, flaxseed oil, are a great way to introduce them into salad dressings or sauces. So we have some recipes where we've done that in the back there. All right. So that's our healthy plate model. And I'd just like to get a visual, while not appetizing at all, <laughs> this gives us a good idea of kind of the portions. Isn't that a little, little gelatin there? Yeah, real tasty. So this is actually salmon. And this is, this is a really good example of the portion size we're looking for. Can you see that it kind of fits in the palm of your hand? This is a little conservative. This is three ounces. We can go to four ounces. That's pretty typical too. But it just kind of fits on a fourth of our plate. And then this is a half cup of grains. We like whole grains. And then we've just, you know, you don't have to be too careful about the portions. The more the merrier with the vegetables. Just throw them on there. I don't see coconut on that list. You know? Coconut oil. Yeah. Um, oh, is it? It might be on a different it's list. There's a the uh, on the Baxter Healthy Plate one, yeah. Okay. So uh, coconut oil, yeah, is uh, is a good source of fat. It's as one well. of my favorites. Oversight, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. And so that kind of concludes our healthy plate. I hope that's provided with you with a framework to create these quick and healthy meals. So I'm going to pass it on to Detail, and he's going to talk to you about bulk um, bin shopping. You just did one question. Where on this healthy plate is fruit coming? Great. So yeah, so um, the fruit we kind of put off to the side, and um, fruit can be a great dessert. We, we didn't really talk about fruit today because that's the ultimate quick, <laughs> quick and easy meal. You just pick it up and eat it. Yeah. But fruit definitely has a place in that. Hi everybody, good morning. Thank you for being here. My name is Vihel and I'll be just talking a little bit about um, bulk bin buying. Does anyone know, does everyone know what bulk bin purchasing is? Perfect. So it's a great way for you guys to um, save money when you're shopping and um, cost effective, no wasteful packaging. Um, you can buy only what you need and also you um, are not committed to um, a big bulk of something that you possibly is not going to like in the future. Um, we have samples of bulk bins, grains here for you, along with um, some organic herbs that we have, and along with it is uh, recipe samples of how to cook these grains. There's different ones. There's quinoa, there's millet, there's um, buckwheat, and also teff, which teff was, is something new to me as well. So um, along with this Italian herbs, there's basil, parsley, oregano, onion, thyme, garlic, uh, chili, black pepper, and sage. Um, it's part of the uh, recipe that we have in there for you. You can use the herbs to sort of like um, the, the, um, the grains um, by adding one teaspoon of it um, when you cook it. It adds aroma, it adds more flavor to the grain, um, and it's just a great idea to do. Which one, which grain is that? This one is mallet. Oh, yeah. so just just a quick piece cooking out of those. Um, they're about the same time. Um, I think 
Is it the cross shot? Okay. And then it's pretty quick. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we had a question, it was gluten free. Yeah. yeah. Is that gluten free? Is the one for no one? Yeah. Millet? Millet is good. Millet is good. I had a question, I had a question. Um, is off the topic, but you mentioned uh, gluten. I mean, I mean, what, what is, what is it? Why is it? Is that bad for you? I mean, what is it? You know what? I keep seeing that uh, gluten free. I mean, what's that mean? Yeah, that is a, such a big topic. Um, yeah. How about I'm gonna ruminate on that, <laughs> and uh, at the end of the presentation, if we have some time, or maybe I can talk uh, okay. to you one on one. Okay, no problem. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Is quinoa a seed? Yeah, not a seed. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yes. It's high in protein and high in fiber. They call that a natural whole protein dish or something. Yeah, a it's whole, a natural whole protein, whole protein dish. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it has that much protein. It has to be essential. It has, it has a little quantity of all of the essential amino acids that we need. Wow. So as Kaylee was talking about, there's certain amino acids that we, um, that we need that um, can't make in the body. So quinoa has small amounts of all of those essential amino acids. And yeah. is barley another good grain to eat? Great. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Another question? Yeah. Um, now I'm going to pass it to Ashley, and Ashley's going to talk to you a little bit about oh, good yeah, tips cool. for healthy meals after I answer this question. Okay, well, I have a question. I'm going to bulk, bulk, bin thing, right? Um, the, uh, um, I was there yesterday, the, um, and um, what about all the, what about all the, you know, like they, they put them, you know, like on the dried fruit, you know, like on the cherries and blueberries and all that. I mean, um, what is this, the sugar content is like, um, you know, so high. I mean, is that, um, is that, um, is that something that um, you're thinking, oh, God, I can't eat, you know, I'm not going to eat that, it's got to be bad for you. I mean, is that, um, is that bad for you? I mean, is that, um, just because it's got, because it seems like it's got more sugar in it than just plain sugar. I mean, Fruit. you know, I mean, truly, because I was looking at it, um, a teaspoon of sugar at like four grams, and um, it seems like it had more sugar than, than real sugar. And you're specifically talking about just the dried fruits? Yeah, like, okay. the, like the cherries and blueberries and cranberries? Sure, mm -hmm. I think for bulk bins, there's actually other selections. So they try to provide selections for everybody. But I know for a fact that there's actually choices that doesn't include sugar at all, other than what the fruit itself has. No sugar added. Yeah. No sugar added. Yeah. So is there a limit of sugar you should have, even from fruit? You know, at Fast Year, we're all about the whole foods, and mm -hmm. if it comes in that whole food form, and that's the natural amount of sugar in mm -hmm. it, we think that's okay. okay. So if you have three apples yeah. a day, and you know, if we're diabetic, you know, yeah. oh we'll, yeah, we'll take a step back from that. But in general, if you're healthy, eat the, the whole food, food great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna touch. You have a handout in your packet that's called Quick Tips for or Tips for Quick and Healthy Meals. I just want to introduce this to you and um, just mention a couple and I'm going to show you some websites. So we're all brainstorming on ways, you know, we're all on the go. We, we got five minutes to put a meal together and um, so we came up with these tips for you. And so for instance, if um, you could make a batch of rice or millet or quinoa or a batch of black beans or kidney beans, and you could freeze individual portions in the freezer and then take them out in the morning and let them thaw in the refrigerator throughout the day. And then at night when you come home and you don't want to spend 40 minutes cooking a meal, you can just pull out that green that you cooked yesterday and throw it into your salad or under your stir fry or your curry. So that's one way to add a, a whole grain or a, um, a protein, a bean to your meal. Another way is, um, just hard boil some eggs, a handful of hard boiled eggs, and really quickly you could keep them in the fridge and dice them up, add them to a salad, slice them, put them on a sandwich, or just eat them by itself for a quick protein fix. Um, a quick way to add some veggies to your, your meal is to keep on hand some chard, some shredded chard, or cabbage, or kale. And these are really easy. You could just throw raw into a salad or um, into a stir fry. And then you have a leafy green in your your meal. And then um, also frozen fruit is a really awesome way to um, add something sweet to your life and something healthy as a quick meal that, you, again, you could stick in the fridge at the beginning of the day and have a nice sweet treat at the, for dinner or you could throw into a smoothie. It's just another way to get those added vitamins and minerals really quickly into your meal. Very cool. Sure. Sorry, I can't, I can't. Question. Um, when you nuke the, uh, 
uh, stuff from the fridge, like you're mentioning, the uh, you know, like one to warm. Does that take away from the nutritional content? Because I always wondered if I'm microwaving this. I mean, is it like ah, now it's zero nutritional? Is that true? Not necessarily. It's not like killing you. Is that what you're asking? Well, like yeah. It's just making it dirt, pretty yeah. much. So you're saying that that doesn't. <laughs> I mean, and dirt. freezing too. I mean, are we talking about um, still good for you? Any processing is going to alter the nutrient content of your food. So it does time. alter it. It does alter. From the time it comes out of the grain or ground, okay. the nutrient content of your food is changing a little bit. But okay. it's it's not, you're not taking away all the nutrients and eating yeah. nothing. Okay. All right. Well, that was my question. By, by I mean, it or nuking it or... Because, uh, yeah, I mean, I was wondering what's happening to it, you know, but um, mm-hmm. sweet. Okay, thank you. What, what That's is why fresher is better. You microwave it. Sorry? What is happening to it when you microwave it? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just heat. It's what? In, in terms of the heating? In terms, in terms of the nutrient uh, uh, metamorphosis. Yeah, um, well, the first thing that comes to mind is, is some oils are sensitive to heat and light, so they can oxidize. And um, you might be able to preserve that in the refrigerator, but as soon as you apply the heat to that, then you're going to lose the beneficial uh, properties of oil. What about the enzymes? He again also break down enzymes. So it's a part of the cooking process. What would you recommend for heating it up then? Maybe the stove top, or I guess it. Uh, I guess it's when you're ever heating it. It doesn't matter how it's. Whatever heated. is easiest for you. Yeah. So what about you're raw food? I mean, I mean, you got some. I mean, is that um? Is that, I got I got some. I'm like on the airplane. He's like raw, everything raw. I mean, mm-hmm. is that true? <laughs> is that true? Raw. There, there are certain foods that are more sensitive to heat than others. So there are certain foods where you're going to get your maximum amount of nutrients if it is raw. You don't have to be totally raw. We're really not losing so much that we have to be super diligent about it. No, raw is not exactly all that. Yeah, that's, you know, a controversial topic. You're, you're really good with controversial topics. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's just a question of the hell is yeah. May as well ask. Yeah, if you if you still are a little unclear about that, again, I'd love to talk to you. Okay. At the end. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Okay, so is there any questions on this handout real quick? No? I'm just going to show you some uh, websites that I really like to use to get some I- quickly ideas for um, meals. here on the back of that quick tips you will see a list of helpful websites that you can go and do quick recipe searches on and this is one that I became fully familiar with quite recently it's fruit and veggies more matters and it's just fruit and veggies more matters.org and you can click on the uh, cooking tab up here this website is actually um, a lot of child care providers at school use this website and um, designing their meal plans for children throughout the day to make sure they're meeting all their nutrient needs. So there's some really great um, recipes on here. There's a tab here that says fruit and vegetable recipe search. And they have fun recipes of the week you can try. Here's quick meals, 30 minutes or less. And they have a whole list for you here. Tarragon and turkey salad, carrot raisin salad. So that's just to get your, your mind going with some ways to um, incorporate these uh, whole foods into your meals. And then allrecipes.com is another really popular one that you may know of. And this one's super easy to navigate. There's a search tab up the top here. And I just type in quinoa there, for instance. And just hit search. And it will pull up a whole list of um, quinoa for you. Minus the Minus the Minus the So I encourage you to check out some of the other um, websites listed on this uh, handout here. And I'm going to turn it over to the food. I just have a quick question on the websites. Do you know of any websites that you could like type in your food allergies and 
There is, um, off the top of my head, I do know vegetariantimes.com, which is on this list here. Okay. And you can actually go, when you're searching, like the search bar that was on rsp.com, they have boxes where you can check gluten-free, allergen-free, vegan, vegetarian, and then it'll pull up recipes based on your search criteria. I think you can also do that with um, this website right here. You can put in your restrictions and it'll tell you what to do. to this that you want. So this one has celery in it and it has kale and onions and some garlic and um, kind of like a tomato base that gives it that real stewy flavor. So um, just as a visual, every I mean most of this stuff is canned so it's just really super simple. 25 um, ounce can of, of chickpeas and drain this and just rinse it off and then do a 28 ounce can of tomato puree and then dump that, I mean all of this you dump into the crock pot. And then you're gonna fill this back up with water and then dump in another 28 ounces of water. And then there's two cans of diced tomatoes that are flavored with garlic and onion. You just dump that in. And then this is one whole onion here. So um, each of these is probably about a cup. So it's gonna be about two cups worth of just diced on onion. And then same thing with celery. This is four stalks of celery. And then spices, there's chili pepper flakes in this, about a uh, half a teaspoon. And you can alter any of the spices that you want in this recipe. So this one today, when you do try it, has a little bit of a kick to it, because um, I put the whole chili pepper in there. And then there's a teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of the Italian seasoning. And um, is that's coming in the herb packet that you guys will go home with today. And then there's three cloves of garlic, that's minced up. And then one cup of lentils, and you can use any lentils you have. And just as Liz mentioned, you can use canned, or you can probably even find those frozen as well. And then half a cup of barley. So all of this stuff, dump into the crock pot, and there's two options. You can do eight hours on low, which is what I did, and it was ready this morning. And then um, the other option is four hours on high. And then the kale, you're gonna add at the very end, probably about the last 20 minutes or so, just to prevent, just to prevent um, overcooking, but um, I'll just put this in here so you guys have a visual of what that looks like, and then of course you'll have to try this at the end, but that's kind of what it looks like there. And then I just wanted to briefly go over, so it's really great um, in the Pacific Northwest we have 
very short summers and not a lot of sunny sun. So this is just a really hearty meal that we can almost go year round really and it's just super simple, pretty straightforward. So this entire thing can definitely cost under, I would say $17. Yeah, and then you have a meal. And this is probably like 10 or 12 servings here. So, I mean, depending on the household size, this can last a couple days or so. Yeah. And you can freeze it? Yeah, absolutely. So you can freeze portions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, did you have a question? That was my question. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I just wanted to go over kale real quick because um, I know for me, once I started at Best Year, actually, I had not worked with a lot of kale. And just to give you guys an idea of how simple it is, I just had cleaned the kale and just tore it up into pieces and threw it in. So it took less than a couple minutes just to add some vegetables to this. So you can do that with kale or with chard, or you can even use frozen vegetables in this. I would just let them thaw out a little bit to get some of the water out or reduce the water that you're putting into the stew. Um, but use any vegetables that you have on hand, so yeah. Um, I've had before somewhere a snack of yeah, it's just, it's just roasted when, with a little bit of olive oil spritzed on top with some seasoning and sea salt. salt or yeah, and it's just roasted I think like five, five, ten, five, five minutes, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's really easy and that's another great application of kale. Yeah. Yeah. And then Rebecca has another great cooking cereal for you. Yeah, so the last um, recipe that we want to share with you today is um, a fun recipe that might be good for um, summertime because you can certainly have it warm, but um, it's tasty at room temperature, so maybe as the days get a little warmer. Um, and the, the whole grain for this recipe is the um, quinoa, and then the leafy green that we're going to use in this recipe is um, Swiss chard, or sometimes you see in stores rainbow, rainbow chard and red chard. Um, any of those varieties um, are good. So for those of you who um, aren't familiar with quinoa, uh, it's a grain that grows in Bolivia and Peru, and you can find it in the box section for about $4 a pound. And um, this is one cup of it cooked up, so you can see that, that a cup has a pretty good yield to it. It's kind of a fluffy grain. It has um, a nutty kind of flavor. And um, compared to other grains, as I think we mentioned earlier, uh, it does have a higher protein content. So you do get all of the, um, at least uh, small amounts of all of the different essential amino acids um, in the quinoa. So um, I cook about one cup of quinoa to one and three quarters cup of water. And this recipe is also in your packet. Uh, so one way to make this recipe really quick would be um, if you cooked up grain on the weekend and you just had it stashed in your fridge, then it could come together really quickly. But in general, the quinoa does um, cook quickly compared to um, other grains like brown rice. The quinoa is quicker, so it's done in about uh, 20 minutes. So if you don't freeze it, how long does it keep in the refrigerator? Um, well, I mean, it depends. I mean, um, we think that a couple of weeks is okay because then the flavor and the texture might change. But um, yeah, and in the refrigerator, two to three days. In the freezer, it can be up to uh, two or three weeks. Mm. <coughs> no one is talking about organic. <coughs> Are you just assuming that all the stuff you're talking about is organic? Uh, I don't make that assumption, and, and I think most of us don't because um, organics often do cost more. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it, it's really a personal choice based on your budget. You know what fits into your budget to buy organic. Um, there is a website that we can share with you um, when we finish up things today that can help you uh, kind of focus in on maybe some of those produce items that would have uh, the greatest amount of pesticides and you might just want to mm -hmm. focus on those and try to buy those organic um, because it, it can get a little hard on the budget to do that for everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah I think you can look up it's called the Dirty Dozen the top yeah. 12 that have the most Desired here. Yeah, that's a, that's a great resource. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Right, so the, um, the leafy green in this uh, recipe is the, the Swiss chard. And what really gives this recipe a lot of flavor is um, a sweet onion and two cloves of garlic, uh, which were sauteed together. 
And if you dice the onion on the small side, you're going to find that it only takes about five minutes to saute the, the onion and the garlic. And then at that point, you can add the, um, the Swiss chard leaves. And the Swiss chard, um, if you haven't purchased that before in the store, you're going to find it near the kale, and it's probably about the same size as the kale leaves. Uh, so this, the finer that you cut the Swiss chard, the faster that it's going to cook. So um, if you're willing to spend a little bit of time in cutting, you can really kind of speed through this, this recipe. Right, so five minutes on the, uh, the onion and the garlic saute, and then I added the Swiss chard leaves, and really just a few more minutes is all it needed in a covered skillet because I did chop them kind of fine. And at that point, you're ready to uh, just go ahead and toss it with the quinoa. How much quinoa? So that was just one cup of dry quinoa that, that was cooked up with water. And if you can see that it does kind of uh, <coughs> up and yields, um, yields quite a lot. Um, sure. I missed how long you cooked it. The quinoa, once it comes to a boil, will be done in about 20 minutes. Yeah. So you just turn it down and cover it. And it cooks covered. <coughs> Okay. But yeah. the closer that you can get, 
foods to how they exist mm -hmm. in nature. That's how kind of how we would encourage you. Yeah. And then using that <coughs> and following the healthy plate okay. model as far as your portions and how you eat together. Mm -hmm. And also the idea for the recipe that we provided for you guys is just a baseline. You can yeah. you know own it, make it your own. So but that's just an idea. Well not necessarily the same means bad. No, no not at all. Not at all. Okay. Oh yeah, so, you turn the TV on. Everybody's saying no. Vegetarian. <laughs> well, happy animals. Yeah, <laughs> as long as it's happy animal, grass fed. Oh yeah, no. grass fed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Choice. Well, um, we are at about quarter of eleven right now, and uh, we want do want to leave some time for some sharing and some questions, and for you to. Um, sample the items that we've prepared but um, yeah we we're busy as students and we recognize that a lot of you are busy with your schedules and everything that you have going on so we do hope that what we've shared today as far as the tips and the samples and the recipes that we've demonstrated will help you to um, be able to incorporate healthy eating into your busy lives and we uh, definitely appreciate you coming and being with us today um, at this point we were going to open it up for some sharing yeah, if you guys have any meals that you make at home that you feel fits into the, the healthy plate model that we shared, um, we'd love to hear it. I think it would be really beneficial for all of us. Um, yeah, on this sheet, I noticed you mentioned Whole Foods and PCC. Would Trader Joe's be included in healthy shopping? For the most part, I think it Plus, Trader Joe's has frozen brown rice. It's ready in three minutes. Exactly. Yeah, they do have Trader Joe's. Talk about convenience. Yeah, yeah. Trader Joe's do have a section of organic food as well as bulk purchasing. And I noticed also that they are also lower in cost. So, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely All the fruits and vegetables. And they have these hockey puck looking um, steel cut oats. Oat, steel cut oatmeal that's in like a, re a ready to go serving. So it's in the frozen section. You should take out one of those and then just pop it in the microwave. And that's a great breakfast. Compared to you know instant other it, It's just the blade that was used to actually cut the oats. Is it a healthier choice in general? But yeah. the others are okay too. Yeah. Um, quick cut oats. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but may have a little bit more of the bran on the outside removed so that it can cook faster. Where the steel cut oat is just cut at a different angle so that all of those components are still there. As long as it's yeah. a whole one. And because the instant one is not going to have all the, you know, all the uh, E-complex and all the vitamins that are in the outer show. So as long as it's that old one, it's fine. If it's still cut oats or rolled oats, so the shape, it doesn't matter so much as, you know. I think we had a question right here. Yeah, yeah I, I've got a question about, about three things quickly. Uh, <clears throat> sea salt as opposed to other uh, your take on that. The next one is seaweed as a green vegetable, uh, any comments on that, and dealing with olive oils, some things are passed off as olive oil, which is canola with chlorophyll added, uh, do you know of any really reliably good olive oils that we can get? vegetables, um, we definitely encourage sea vegetables. I mean, there's a lot of uh, minerals that you can get in, on all different kinds of sea vegetables, and they're also very easy to cook. So it's another good way to incorporate a green into your diet. And also, if you're a vegetarian, for example, it's a good source of... Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's, I'm sorry. So it's a good source of iodine, for example, for someone who's using sea salt that doesn't have any iodine. So that would be a good source, too. Um, what is the difference between sea salt and then it just comes from the sea, right? I mean, right? And one's mined out of a, of a hill outside or whatever? Yeah, sea salt, uh, the difference is that it has some trace minerals, so there are some benefits to it. Um, See that a lot now, you know. Sea salt. sea salt. Just salt. Huh. So is, some, is that better for you, sea salt? Well, you can uh, benefit well, from these additional minerals. That's, okay. Yeah, but there's not so much, uh, you know, it's not so much, uh, yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. If not as processed as much better. As long as you use it in moderation, that's the key. Using salt always in moderation. Yeah. Okay. We hesitate to say 
you know, sea salt is healthier because that sometimes makes people think, huh, oh, just pour it on everything. It's like filtered cigarettes, better than non filtered Exactly. We still need to practice moderation. <laughs> Extra virgin olive oil and olive oil. I've heard just regular olive oil is that the one that can be used in, in salad dressings versus, or which one okay. is the best so one to cook with versus yeah. just using it in other things? Okay, uh, our recommendations when choosing an olive oil is it should be first a dark bottle, it should be uh, the first cold press, which is the best one, and extra virgin. So when you're looking for oils, if you can go for that, extra virgin, the first cold press, and a dark bottle to reduce the oxidation of the oil. And uh, if you can keep it refrigerated after you buy it and you open it, that's going to promote the shelf life of the oil. I've never heard of that refrigeration. Yeah, that's because, so you just have to make sure you put it out, uh, you know, like 30 minutes before you're oh, actually yeah. going to be using yeah. it because it's going to be yeah. solid. Yeah. Exactly. Aren't there some oils you can cook with at a high temperature and some you can't? Mm -hmm. Like, what about olive oil? What can you cook with at a high temperature? Olive oil, can you only add that to salads and stuff or what? Yeah, um, I don't remember exactly which ones are the, uh, the ones with the higher canola um, oil. Canola oil. oil is a really good one if you're going to okay. cook, like, fry anything uh, into a really high temperature. And, and grapeseed oil should never be heated. Grapeseed oil. There is a website that we're going to try to look for you that actually gives you the list of oils that would be low heat, medium heat, high heat. There is that website and they list every oil possible out there and what type you should use for cooking. But you're right. Typically olive oil are easy for, for salad dressings and for stir frying then we have other oils that have a higher point. So, yeah. We're going to bring the list of the I make sure that I give you the list. I know olive oil is not one of them. The way I talk to my kids about oil, because I think oil is so confusing, is I tell them if you don't know what it is, you don't use it. Because like they know what an olive is and it's oily, but they don't know what a canola is. It's like they have no idea. So it's like you know what a sunflower is when you touch it, it's oily. You know you don't know what a safflower is. You never think you know. So it's like if you know what it is and it's oily, it's a good oil. Yeah, the canola comes from the rape seed. It's, it's called rape seed. So. But it's not. It's, it's not oily. It's processed to go on and just boil it. Yes, it's, and it's all genetically modified, all of it. It's genetically modified to be like oil. Yeah. Yeah. It's some organic canola, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just as an option, yeah. but I think, I think it does get to the point. It's called Canada oil. We have a question in the back. <laughs> Were you giving a website for the Dirty Dozen? I was really interested in that. The website for the which dirty dozen. Kind, which vegetables are grown? Right. Yeah. 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 Let's get That's that. Can you guys keep the Rebecca you know, yeah. list? <laughs> and there's an iPhone app for that too. So you guys have iPhones. Yeah. What do you guys think about um, deep fat fried Twinkies and baking fat? We are all What do you think about that? <laughs> I don't know, I've heard of them, but I've never tried it. <laughs> that doesn't really fit onto our healthy plate oh. in any particular place. <laughs> so. I've actually seen it in Las Vegas, but I really hesitated. So I think good, idea. good idea. Hi, yeah. oh, I was recently reading um, an article that said for quinoa to make it taste tastier, you could um, put it in an oven and like toast it a little bit before you cooked it. I was wondering if anybody had done that and did that. Mm -hmm. And then could you put it in the fridge and save it before you cook it? Yeah, I don't see why I'll not. I'll do that in the pot. It, it, be perfect. Sure, in terms of also improving the flavor, I'm not sure if Rebecca had a chance to talk about this, but um, rinsing the quinoa before cooking it at all can remove some of that bitter um, taste to it. I'm not sure how that works. Do you like really soak it for a few hours? Just rinse it. Just in like a strainer. Rinsing yeah, can improve the flavor. Another great way to add some quick flavor to your cooked grains is to cook them in some veggie broth or some chicken broth instead of just putting water. But you're right, you can heat the grain before so that it can pop and then it cooks even faster. And so some people do that, but you don't have to actually because it's ready in 15 minutes. But does it change the taste? Does it make it better? Uh, yeah, maybe. It makes it a little bit more flavorful, but um, like a good example of that is of the buckwheat. Um, there is um, a, an option that you can actually um, toast it before you actually add the water. So you toast it for about, I don't know, three to four minutes. Um, it should start, you should start smelling it, it should start popping a little bit. 
before you add the water, and it, it just adds to different flavors. Right? Yeah, question. Good question. You hear a lot about corn and its inability to um, you know, digest in it. It's hard. Um, you guys um, study that at all? Get any feedback on that? Or? On the digestibility of corn? Yeah. I know some people have trouble digesting that, um, corn in particular, but um, it varies from person to person, and it's just an individual case. You consider that a very nutritional corn? Corn? Yes, it's a whole grain. Oh, okay. Good. But organic corn. Preferably. Yeah. Preferably, yeah. Because the, the GMOs from Monsanto are notoriously found in corn. Yes. Farm. Yeah. Farm. Yes. Farm. What about those GMOs? Can you guys get any feedback on that? Or is that too controversial? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really, it, it's such an individual choice. What does Bastier say in general on, uh, on the topic? <laughs> <laughs> No, no. <laughs> yeah, I guess best year in general would be, um, there, there's many different reasons. It's not so much from a nutritional standpoint, yeah. but from an environmental, uh, um, fairness to farmers kind of yeah. um, angle. But in terms of nutrition, if we want to focus in on that, we there actually isn't that big of a difference between genetically modified and regular. But there are many other reasons to go genome. Right. My personal opinion is that there's not enough evidence to this point to know if there's going to be any uh, side effects to having these genetically modified foods. Yeah. So if you can choose an organic one for now, that, that's great. If not, then, you know. I would like to challenge um, people in this room to read the China study, the book, The China Study, and it will definitely convince you of certain things, especially GMOs and Monsanto in particular. And I just wanted to answer your question about the gluten. Uh, so all these grains we have here are gluten-free, in case some of you have a gluten intolerance. So gluten is not bad. It's what gives uh, bread the texture uh, and other um, gluten-containing uh, foods. But if someone has a food intolerance or it has celiac, which is an, um, an immune disorder where you have an, a real allergy to the, to the gluten, then you have to avoid that in your I see. Okay. Okay. One more thing about the gluten too. Um, a couple months ago, we did a similar thing like this, um, specifically about gluten-free foods. Yeah. Um, you can find that up on our YouTube channel. If you go to the best on the website, there's a link to the YouTube channel. You can okay. see the whole thing there. Okay. Thank um, you. I think in the back. So I'm looking for breakfast ideas that are gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free, corn-free. Do you guys have anything? Because that's my hardest meal is. Breakfast. I don't, besides fruit, I'm not sure what to have. Oatmeal with fruit is always a good idea. So, is oatmeal gluten free? I've heard yes and no. Well, there can be cross contamination, but if you buy one that's certified gluten free, that um, red cups, what's uh, the uh, uh, no. yeah, That's a good brand. So, as long as it's certified gluten free, you should be okay. okay. But don't buy it in the bulk section because you can have some cross contamination with other. The Bob's Red Mill steel cuts definitely yeah, gluten free. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, and again, that's something you can make in a big batch on a Sunday night, and you can eat it for two weeks. And going back to this guy here, you can do oatmeal in a crock pot, you can do millet in a crock pot, and you can do those overnight on low, and then you can have oatmeal ready for you in the morning too. Did you yeah. say you can't have eggs? No eggs. No almonds. Yeah. There's yeah. a whole list. I just keep going. Yeah, so you could start with that as your base and just have your grain free in the morning and then add whatever to it that you want. And um, polenta is also a good idea. You can have corn? No corn. No corn, okay. Uh, buckwheat? Have you tried buckwheat? Is that gluten free? Yes. Yeah. So you can have cashew in the morning. Actually, it's really good because I've had it. And um, you can uh, Google some cashew recipes, and there are plenty. And that would be a good option for you in the morning. And you can take a sample here today. Yeah, thank you. You might be interested as well. There's some coupons for free nutrition visits up there if you want to come and um, have an individual appointment with um, our nutrition team. Okay. I just wanted to also address this gentleman's question earlier regarding sea salt and the seaweed. So there's some sea salt that um, doesn't have iodine, so we want to make sure. I don't know what your diet is. I don't know if you're getting enough iodine in your diet. Just um, incorporating, so if you are using a sea salt, um, just make sure that you're also having the, um, the seaweed incorporated along with your diet would provide you with enough iodine. What are other sources of iodine besides salt? Seaweed. 
think it's I think it's pretty restricted to sea vegetables, which is why we have fortified our salt with iodine. It's, it's in some fortified food. Yeah, the salt, the table salts that you get, um, it's usually iodized. 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 <laughs> iodized. Oh, there we go. In the little umbrella girl. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I think we have time for a, a couple I just, more questions. I just want to make a, a quick comment for anyone that can afford it. Um, try to buy um, your tomatoes and beans in cans that aren't, that don't have BHA. I know Eden is the only one I know for the beans, and they just started packing their tomatoes in glass. Oh, yeah. Because I guess you can't do can. Uh, Eden said you can't do the tomatoes in cans. What's wrong with cans? It's BHA. BHA? Anybody want to grab that? I'm not familiar with that. BHA? Like they say, like the water bottles, even. You got to be careful. Oh. BPA. Well, I think we'll be kind of milling around here. Um, I think this would be a good time to get some food if you'd like some. Oh, and I can take your question. I just wanted to say thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs>